What's up everyone, it's Endymion, and there's some interesting things to go over today, from IGN France apologizing about their Stellar Blade article, but now new information has come out, and the editor-in-chief over there has a meltdown and now claims that Stellar Blade is going to harm women. I wish I was kidding, but I'm not. Helldivers 2 is too toxic, claims journalists, and game companies are taking it upon themselves to enact new ways to moderate and control the way game communities are operated, and they are already finding ways to infiltrate your private spaces. Beyond this, we also have Hellblade 2 getting some worrying news that echoes a pre-Suicide squad as disaster and much more, so let's begin. To start, let's look at Stellar Blade, which as you probably know has pissed off journalists aplenty already because it completely bucks the trend of what these game journalists want in video games. They desire amorphous, vague body types with no gender-specific nuances in their video games. So when a game comes along with a beautiful woman like Eve, obviously, that's a big no-no, and a fat X on the checklist for wrong think in their eyes. You may remember that IGN France did an article about Stellar Blade, where they claimed the game was made by people who've never been with or seen a woman in their lives. Of course, fans quickly assembled like the Avengers and clapped back with photos of Stellar Blade CEO's own wife, who not only has model-like looks, but she's also an insanely talented artist herself as well. Basically, the CEO of Shift Up, which makes Stellar Blade, has one in life, fellas. He's got it all. A cool company, a dope game in the making, and a smoking hot wife. He's doing great, and that angers these people aplenty. Anyway, fans shot back, then IGN France had to backpedal due to the backlash. Here's what they said in regards of their massive loss against the players. Recently, IGN France produced and published a preview of Stellar Blade containing an offensive passage that should never have been kept. The text has now been edited, and here is our official apology to the Shift Up Corporation studio staff. Also, please note that IGN France is an independent branch of IGN and that IGN's editorial staff had nothing to do with this incident. The original text of the Stellar Blade preview contained comments that were out of place. While it was never our intention to disrespect Shift Up or any of its employees or their work, we recognize that the phrase taken in its literal sense was inappropriate and we regret it. To anyone at Shift Up Corporation who felt personally targeted and insulted by this passage, we are truly sorry and sincerely apologize. So, good on IGN France for owning up to their failure, and yet again I want to use this moment to remind you of the power you wield as a player in today's market. Maybe before you thought you were powerless or too weak to have any meaningful change, but that's not true. Every one of you out there has the power to change something, and clearly when you band together under a collective banner of power, you can change things. How do I know? Because you all just brought IGN France to their knees when they tried to virtue signal. So I just want to say thank you very much for being based as hell, dear viewers, and I hope this shows you that these studios and websites cannot ignore you like they think they can. They don't exist without you, and you are the reason they are able to operate and continue. So, keep them accountable, and whenever these websites or whoever attempts to spread false lies like this, you all know what to do. But I can tell based on this response that IGN France was not happy that they had to do this and likely they felt ashamed that they had to apologize. Then another user discovered that the editor-in-chief over at IGN France said in a public forum from what they really thought about Stellar Blade and the user base at large. They could have just apologized and moved on, but these woke lunatics always double down fellas, and this is where things go from bad to worse. Grums highlighted a user by the name of Topek899, where the editor-in-chief at IGN France said this publicly. Then Topek899 translated what this message said, so here's what was said about Stellar Blade, and you'll see how hateful this editor-in-chief is towards it, and I quote, Yes, no problem, go tell that to the women who are hit, killed, denigrated, or who commit self-deletion because they cannot live up to the fictional standards expected by men. The problem is not the sexy design itself, except that it sucks compared to others, but hey, that doesn't matter. But the percentage of males who will only want this type of fictional body in reality. Obviously, we understand that this does not shock people who think that women are objects who must obey and be beaten. This design makes us sigh and roll our eyes, and we laugh at anyone who needs it, man or woman, but that's it." End quote. 
So, IGN France's editor-in-chief believes the Stellar Blade's existence is not only problematic, but will incite violence against women across the planet when it arrives. Yeah, you heard that right. Stellar Blade is the January 6th of video games for these woke journalists. And they can't fathom that its existence is being celebrated, and they are dreading its arrival with utter fear in their hearts. Need I remind you that you think you don't like game journalists already, but they always seem to find a way to dig that grave ever deeper and make you dislike them even more. I loathe this sort of rhetoric from the Wokies because they blow things out of proportion thinking that if they do it, it will somehow incite the companies above them to do something about it. Like if they say Stellar Blade will cause bodily harm to women, which is ridiculous, it's a video game, what does this have to do with the real world? But anyway, I guess IGN France's crazy journalists believe maybe if they stir up enough of a stink, maybe PlayStation will censor the game or something. I genuinely believe once Stellar Blade arrives, we're going to see a very insufferable meta of lunacy that comes from these websites. And it will take every fiber in these websites' beings to not write hit pieces about it. Because remember, these are the same crowds who can't tell you what a woman is anyway, but they obviously know that whatever Eve is must be stopped. Which doesn't make any sense, if anything can be a woman, then why can't Eve be a part of that too? I feel like I'm dealing with toddlers who also have access to the internet and soy in their bloodstreams. They just want everything to be as insufferable and confused as they are, and they're really mad that you're all not subscribing to that nonsense. This IGN France editor's takes are about as hyperbole as they get. It's like when they said when Trump gets elected that gay people will be beaten in the street or something. Actually, did you know that when Trump was elected, there were actually no new wars started during his presidency? But as soon as Joe Biden was elected, the Ukraine war happened, Israel and Palestine too, not to mention America, pulled out of the Middle East, and left behind billions of dollars worth of weapons and vehicles to be used by the radicalized groups over there. But don't worry about any of that, just lay your soft head on IGN's soy-filled shoulder and ignore the objective reality that surrounds you. Instead, just consume the rhetoric that when Cellar Blade comes out, women will apparently be dying in the streets. Again, these are the same people who can't define what a woman even is anyway, but they know that they'll be dying apparently. I would say these groups are crazy, but I think the word has lost all meaning in today's world. And saying women can't live up to the fictional standards set by men? Hello? As if that's not something men need to deal with too when it comes to the same sort of thing. Although, you don't see men crying when another ripped fighting game character gets revealed. Instead of crying about it, dudes just look at it and go, Hell yeah, brother, I gotta hit the gym more. Maybe if these woke lunatics who can't define what gender anything is, maybe if they put down the keyboards and lattes, and just lifted some weights and talked to people with differing opinions, they could return to reality like the rest of us. I promise you that the world is not as racist and problematic as you think it is, and likely if you actually reached out to people who thought differently, you'd realize that you have a lot more in common than you think. Of course, all over social media, whenever these woke lunatics speak, I tell them, hey, go talk about your ideology on a live stream with someone you disagree with, and they never do. Take Ash Parrish, for example, who works for The Verge. They're the person who wrote another Sweet Baby Defender article, where they also omitted critical information about why it happened, and then they got exposed in the DM saying they purposely left that information out of the article because it went against their narrative. Ash Parrish tends to keep running in circles with their opinions, you know, the typical stuff they always say. Ash said this when a user on Twitter claimed they wanted Eve to be even hotter. There is a subtle but important distinction between empowering sexuality like Bayonetta and male gaze ass and titty sexuality. I disagree, Ash. By the way, don't harass this person either, they're infected with the brain rot already. But maybe, through time and effort, we can uncloud their mind from the craziness that they live in. But anyway, no, Eve is no different than Bayonetta, and I would argue that Bayonetta is far more sexualized on purpose than Eve is. Bayonetta has tons of shots in-game where her assets are shown deliberately. She has attacks where her clothing, which is made of her hair by the way, just flies off her body and then eats monsters, and every moment of Bayonetta's gameplay, it celebrates her sexuality as well. Of course, Grums responded to her, to which Ash then said, Hi, is it possible to ask you a question? Can you explain to me how I'm trying to rewrite history regarding Bayonetta? 
because I've made it very clear in other tweets that I'm very much not. One more question. Can you leave marginalized developers alone, please? First of all, Ash, you said one question and you followed up with another question. So that's actually two questions. But anyway, moving on, you literally wrote an entire article about the Sweet Baby backlash and then you chose not to present it in a way that told the true story. Here's the article you wrote, which was titled The Return of Gamergate is Smaller and Sadder. And the only time you even mention the person who started this, who was Chris Kindred, an employee of Sweet Baby, is where you said this. Meanwhile, Sweet Baby's clients are sticking with the company. The studios that we're currently working with have reached out and offered their support, saying like, hey, we see what's happening online and just know that we stand with you, said Chris Kindred, a narrative designer at Sweet Baby. That's the only paragraph in your entire article that you wrote where you reference the person that actually started the smear campaign. Yet you don't present that information at all. Instead, you paint the abuser who tried to silence Cabrutus as a victim and yet just left out the truth. So you're actually just as bad as the other journalists when it comes to backpedaling and rewriting history. I mean, you even said yourself here in response to a tweet which said, what do you do for a living? Short oversimplifications only. And you said, rewrite video game history. Bravo, Ash. This is the first tweet in this entire saga of Gamergate 2 where you didn't lie for once or omit critical information. This is healthy. This is good. This is your first step towards rehabilitation from your inability to speak the truth when it really matters. Repeat after me, okay, Ash? Chris Kindred of Sweet Baby attempted a smear campaign to silence Cabrutus Rambo. Say that five times in the mirror and now open your heart and accept it because you know it to be true. And once you learn what the truth is, I want you to take that and start writing articles where truth comes before your mental fiction. And maybe then, once that happens, we can shift the conversation in a bit and then we can discuss it. But until you're willing to do that, you're just another woke journalist who rewrites video game history as you admitted. How you and your co-workers wake up every day knowing that you're lying every day on purpose like this astounds me. By the way, this is not harassment. I'm not attacking you. I'm trying to help you here. You're clearly lost and you need help. If you actually opened yourself to talking to my side of the aisle, you'd realize we're very welcoming and actually really nice. And unlike your side, we don't throw our own under the bus so we can climb the social ladder a little higher. You say a little wrong thing and all your friends will devour you whole. That's not very nice of your friends, but hey, that's the group you wanted to associate with, so have at it. While I got you here, Ash, I wanted to ask you something about what you tweeted recently. Where is it? Oh, here it is. You said this in response to white people playing basketball. We haven't seen this level of white-on-white -white violence since January 6th, and you followed it up by saying, Y'all roasting the white meat of that poor Dutch child shaking my head. Why are you referring to people with white skin as white meat? Why don't you ever refer to black people as a similar term? Ash Parrish, why are you racist like this? Seriously, a genuine question for you. Oh wait, yeah, you did reply, well, not to me, but someone else, where you said this. This is a joke, hope that helps. Yeah, no Ash, that's not a joke, that's blatant racism. We both know that if someone referred to a black person unironically as black meat, you'd be losing your mind along with all of your friends. Look, I get it that you're a racist and you write for games journalism, so these things are kind of birds of a feather and all that. But maybe at least try to not be a terrible person. You're already lying when it comes to articles posted on a website and then changing stories with propaganda. But to also be racist towards other human beings for the color of their skin like this, and then yet again unironically connect it somehow to January 6th, I mean, I couldn't write a funnier joke about this if I tried, because your own cell phones are amazing on their own. But we're not racist, we're just tired of you and your friends that keep painting us as terrible human beings with absolutely zero evidence to ever back up these claims. You probably think I'm racist for signaling you out like this, but I'm just trying to show you that what you're doing is even worse than what you claim your opposition does. It's no wonder your game journalist friends hate YouTubers like me and others, because we actually do your jobs way better than you do, and we also don't have to lie while we do it either. I also don't bow to some weird mob that will devour me like a pond full of piranhas in any given second either. I guess that comes with the perks of actually showing receipts, not spreading lies, and actually trying to change the industry for the better. When we both know that if it was up to you, things would stay the same forever, which means we'd be living in a state of perpetual lies and propaganda. 
I'm not okay with that, clearly. And again, if you ever feel like you're up to it, please hit up Yellow Flash or Geeks and Gamers. I'm sure they would love to have you on. Of course, if you ever do it, you can bet I'll be on the same panel too, because I'd love to talk to you, genuinely. Not to attack you, by the way. I actually want to know why your brain works the way it does, and why your journalist friends all seem like NPCs in an open-world video game who just echo the same thing. But if you don't want to, that's fine. I mean, you're doing a fine job ruining your own image all by yourself anyways. Stellar Blade is not sexist, nor is it going to harm any real women in the world in any way that matters. It's a video game about a badass woman killing aliens with a sword. It's really not that deep. Well, the only thing that will be deep when Stellar Blade comes out is Shift Up's pockets because they're going to make more money than God for a little while after release, but you get what I mean. I'm so excited for Stellar Blade, dude. It's going to be one hell of a launch. But when it comes to dealing with wrong thinking journalists, we always think, well, at least they haven't infiltrated our game spaces completely, right? Well, there's this thing that's being used in online communities already that is pretty concerning to begin with. From GameDeveloper.com, they've promoted this software called ToxMod by Modulate in their article titled, Toxicity and the Bottom Line, Five Benefits of ToxMod Voice Moderation. Effectively, moderating toxicity is crucial to building gaming environments that are engaging and safe. We dive into the cost of toxicity and five proven benefits of voice moderation with ToxMod. So, ToxMod is a software that allows game companies to moderate the in-game voice chats of the video games they operate. Basically meaning that anything you say within a video game, as in the in-game chat or whatnot, it can be logged and then neatly kept forever within the background by these companies thanks to this. Apparently it exists to reduce in-game toxicity, which GameDeveloper.com says according to ToxMod's research that also cites take this which is that company branch of Homeland Security that specializes in extremism in video games. They also cite a study, which they say in their own words, a study by UC Irvine's Constant Sten Kuehler founded that players spend on average of $21 in non-toxic games, and only $12 in toxic titles in equivalent genres. That means less toxic games can experience a 54% boost to in-game spending. That's a big increase. So they're attempting to paint the picture that by using something like ToxMod, your games will make more money because players won't be assaulted as much in-game. This then brings me to articles like this one from G-Infinity Esports titled Helldivers 2 is never getting PvP and you can thank Toxic Gamers. They attempt to say that Helldivers 2 specifically is being targeted and destroyed by an onslaught of toxic players within its community and that the CEO claims PvP will never be added to reduce toxicity, which is true, he did say that. But I think the main reason why PvP isn't in Helldivers is simply because it wouldn't make any sense, since the game is about pushing back hordes of robots and alien bugs. And in order to differentiate itself, it would be in Helldivers' best interest to not implement modes that other games have, like Halo, Destiny, COD, and so on. But for this article to say straight up that it's because of toxic players is just untrue and they are attempting to gaslight the Helldivers community into believing that their very new and thriving group of players are somehow stained by the mark of toxic fandom already. Which, if you have a functioning brain in your skull, you know that toxicity can never be fully removed from anything and the entire concept of competitiveness will always pave the way to some form of toxicity, whether it's video games, sports, or even playing cards with your friends, or really anything else. What worries me the most is that when articles spread lies like this about stuff like Helldivers, it wrongfully turns the conversation towards less in-game control or freedom of speech for players. Which is not just for Helldivers, of course, but all multiplayer games in general. And why things like ToxMod worry me? Which, I'm not accusing Arrowhead Studios, which owns Helldivers, of using anything like it. But it is an option that any studio can technically use if they want, but things like ToxMod attempt to say that they are a net positive for your game. But what I think stuff like this really does is to be more of a Trojan horse than anything else. Because if more and more game companies embrace these invasive software applications, what you're going to end up with are video game communities where everything you say while playing can be used against you. If you get mad and you say something you regret, or maybe make some politically incorrect jokes, which I do all the time, I admit, these software applications can compile whatever you say, and then they can use that to not only ban your account, but they can use it in a legal court case against you too. 
And with the way the world governments are pushing things like hate speech laws, something like this could do a lot of harm to innocent people who just want to play video games. Imagine you play a game like Helldivers, you make a joke or two to your friends, then suddenly you get an email with an audio file documenting what you said. And now they can use that to forward it to your employer in order to get you fired or blacklisted from an industry. That's what these sorts of things can be used for and that scares me personally. You're already having your privacy invaded from all sorts of things attempting to know more about you. Like that recent story of how Facebook has allegedly sold the private messages of its users to Netflix, which was brought up in court by lawyers during a current lawsuit involving these groups. Here's more to what's going on there and I quote, in a court document dated April 14, 2023, the law firm of Klein and Grabert alleged that for nearly a decade, starting in 2011, Netflix and Facebook enjoyed a special relationship and entered into a series of agreements to share user data. Benzinga reached out to Meta platforms for comment on the allegations. Reed Hastings, who was founder and CEO of Netflix at the time, also sat on Facebook's board of directors, and it was from this position that he was alleged to have leveraged his influence to enter into a series of Facebook extended API agreements. This allowed Netflix access to Facebook's users' private message inboxes that enabled the company tailor streaming content for its own customers. Why would Facebook allow such unfettered access? The lawsuit claimed the driving force behind the agreement was advertising revenues. Netflix was apparently spending around $40 million a year on Facebook advertising, and by 2015 had entered into an agreement allowing Netflix data to be used for targeting optimization and Facebook's ad systems." End quote. So why am I talking about Facebook and Netflix when it comes to in-game voice chat and stuff like Helldivers 2 being apparently toxic? Well, it all sort of melts into the same pot, if you will, when it comes to user data and your freedom of speech. Companies are constantly buying and selling private information of users already, and when it comes to something like ToxMod, they can now compile anything you say while you're enjoying your favorite video games too. Maybe you have an opinion on your country's government or a politician, or your group chat gets into a spicy topic, which let's not lie, we've all been there before. Well, now those voice chats won't disappear into the ether, never to be seen or heard again anymore if this gets normalized. And things like this can be archived and obviously sold to other companies as private information and maybe in the future you attempt to run for public office or you get a new job. And suddenly, out of nowhere, here comes an audio log where you were younger, where you said something spicy and now you're screwed. What I hate about this the most is that things like these are often pushed as righteous and necessary, but ultimately what they result in is a constant steady loss of freedoms on your part at the expense of corporate gain. And we know that Take This, that Homeland Security spin-off company, wants to police your speech within video games already. They'll paint it as extremism and say it's a necessary step to stopping toxicity in online spaces, but what it really is ultimately is an infringement on your rights as a human being where you cannot in any space, whether it's Facebook, gaming, or whatever else, escape the thought police no matter what. And these hit pieces claiming, oh, all Helldivers 2 fans are toxic, is all that is needed for some out-of-touch Congress people who don't even play video games to be convinced that, well, you know what, yeah, these gamers sure are toxic because these articles are saying that. So yes, we will allow these companies absolute power over online speech and response. And this is just one gigantic step in the direction of regulating the internet and ensuring the concept of right versus wrong think is inescapable, no matter where you go. Because we all know that toxicity or hate speech in gaming can be ignored by turning off the chat. I mean, whenever I play online, I usually auto-mute everybody anyway. Not because I expect hate speech, but people's microphones usually have screaming babies in the background, pots and pans falling over, or some relative yelling. We've all heard it before. Or you get that one guy who's blitzed out of his goddamn mind, blasting music at max volume right into the microphone and you can't hear anything but their music. Again, we have all definitely experienced that before too. But this is simply just another way for these groups to inch ever closer to controlling and policing every single thing imaginable when it comes to not just the internet, but the video games you love to play. And I think that's terrible, and of course places like GameDev.com, which made that article as a promoted sponsored piece of content, are trying to convince whoever reads it that it's a good idea. But I think the more control governments, companies, and consulted agencies gain, the worse everything becomes for the ordinary person. 
Helldiver fans are not any more toxic than any other fandom, and I think painting them as some all bad apples bunch is disingenuous and wrong. And pushing things like audio logs being collected in the name of combating video game extremism is just a convenient goalpost moving chest move to screw us all over in the future even more than we already are. Not to mention we have other grifter consulting agencies like Melanin Gamers which is pushing this toxicity report nonsense where people can vote and claim how toxic certain games are. So parents and players can be informed of how toxic a game is before they play it. Which is ridiculous because all that's going to do is cause people to troll the website and artificially push to get every game listed to 100% toxicity for the laughs. Which I don't blame people who are doing just that by the way because this whole concept is stupid. Now we're going to have Metacritic scores, HR department scores, ESG and what, toxicity scores too? It's so ridiculous. It's just another grift that's made by these Melanin Gamers people the same way Sweet Baby does it too. You artificially create a problem that didn't exist to begin with and then you offer the solution to fix the issue so that you can profit off of it. It's ridiculous, but hey, I'm sure some out of touch executive will bite the bait because they don't want to seem racist or problematic. Finally, I want to end on a story that I'm getting Vietnam flashbacks about, which is from Eurogamer and it's titled, Hellblade 2 will be 30 FPS only on Xbox consoles, Ninja Theory founder has left the studio. It's not so much the 30 FPS thing, I mean this is an Xbox made game, of course it has limitations, why are we even surprised at this point? It's the fact that the founder of the studio has left amidst development. This can be a few reasons, like maybe he is retiring altogether, or he got ousted for some sort of company complaint case. Or what I really hope is that it isn't another Rocksteady situation, where the founders leave because they've been infested with woke activists who will now rot out the entire studio from the inside out again. Obviously it's too early to say because we don't know, but I did want to bring the story to people's attention as early as I can because it worries me. It's never a good sign when a studio's founder leaves amidst development of a game and I really hope this doesn't end up being another Rocksteady-like fumble. Where something like Sweet Baby gets involved and has infiltrated everything within it yet again, I guess if we end up seeing a black viking in Hellblade 2 at some point, that might be a good indication that something weird is definitely going on over there. I don't really have much else to say on it as of now, but yeah, that's really weird and worrying, but as always, let me know what you think about that as well. Why do you think the founder left? And what do you think of IGN France claiming that Stellar Blade will attack women somehow for existing? Or the whole Tox mod nonsense. As always, thank you for watching, like, subscribe, and share the video to help the channel, and thanks to my patrons as always. Thank you for being here, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one.